Hello, the story I'm going to read you today is called Uncle Jed's Barber Shop. It is by Marjorie King Mitchell and illustrated by James Ransom. It doesn't look like they're in a barber shop, but let's read and find out. Jedediah Johnson was my granddaddy's brother. Everybody has their favorite relative and Uncle Jedediah was mine. He used to come by our house every Wednesday night with his clippers. He was the only black barber in the county. Daddy said that before Uncle Jed started cutting hair, he and Granddaddy used to have to go 30 miles to get a haircut. That's very far. That would take like an hour or more to walk that far. I mean, if you had a car, that takes maybe, um, maybe half an hour to drive, but that's very far. After Uncle Jed cut my daddy's hair, he lathered a short brush with soap and spread it over my daddy's face and shaved him. Then he started over on my granddaddy. I always asked Uncle Jed to cut my hair, but Mama wouldn't let him. So he just ran the clippers on the back of my neck and just pretended to cut my hair. He even spread lotion on my neck. I would smell wonderful all day. He's pretending to give her a haircut at her home. Do you think this story took place a long time ago, or does it take place now? When he was done, he would pick me up and sit me in his lap and tell me about the barber shop he was going to open one day and about all the fancy equipment that would be in it. The sinks would be so shiny they sparkled. The floor is so clean you could see yourself. He was going to have four barber chairs, and outside was going to be a big, tall, red and white barber pole. He told me he was saving up for it. He wants to open a very own barber shop. Instead of traveling around to see people, they will go to him. He had been saying the same things for years. Nobody believed him. People didn't have dreams like that in those days. We lived in the South. Most people were poor. My daddy owned a few acres of land and so did a few others but most people were sharecroppers. That meant they lived in a shack and worked somebody else's land in exchange for a share of the crop. So if somebody is poor, that means they don't have enough money for things they need like food and water and clothes and a house. They have a little bit left over because they have their own land that they can grow things on and sell them, but some people, they have to do all the work and they just get a little bit of food and no money. When I was five years old, I got sick. That morning, I didn't come into the kitchen while Mama was fixing breakfast. Mama and Daddy couldn't wake me up. My nightgown and the bedclothes were all wet where I had sweated. Mama wrapped me in a blanket while Daddy went outside and hitched the horse to the wagon. We had to travel about 20 miles into town for the hospital. It was the middle of the day when we got there. We had to go to the colored waiting room. In those days, they kept blacks and whites separate. There were separate public restrooms, separate water fountains, separate schools. It was called segregation. So in the hospital, we had to go to the colored waiting room. So when someone says, this is a story about long ago, when someone says colored, that was the word that black people or African-American people used to talk about themselves. And you would see things about colored people. That's not a word that we really use today, unless we're reading a story about it. And so when they went to the hospital, they had to go to a special waiting room just for black people. And even though I was unconscious, the doctors wouldn't look at me until they had finished with all the white patients. When the doctors did examine me, they told my daddy I needed an operation and it would cost $300. $300 was a lot of money in those days. My daddy didn't have that kind of money and the doctors wouldn't do the operation until they had the money. So when things were still segregated, they always went to the white people first and then the black people because a lot of people then thought that white people were better. We know that that's not true. And look, they they finally looked at her after a long time but she's very sick and she needs an operation and it costs a lot of money my mama bundled me back up in the blanket and they took me home mama held me in her arms all night she kept me alive until daddy found uncle jed 
You find him early the next morning in the next county on his way to cut somebody's hair. Daddy told him about me. Uncle Jed leaned on his bent cane and stared straight ahead. He told Daddy that money didn't matter. He couldn't let anything happen to his Sarah Jean. What do you think Uncle Jed will do? Well, I had the operation. For a long time after that, Uncle Jed came by the house every day to see how I was doing. I know that $300 kept him from opening the barber shop. Uncle Jed came awfully close to opening his shop a few years after my operation. He had saved enough money to buy the land and build the building. But he still needed money for all of the equipment. The equipment is like all of the tools that he needs, like the chairs and clippers and things like that. Anyway, Uncle Jed had come by the house. We had just finished supper when there was a knock on the door. It was Mr. Ernest Walters, a friend of Uncle Jed's. He had come by to tell Uncle Jed about the bank failing. That was where Mr. Walters and Uncle Jed had all of their money. Uncle Jed had over $3,000 in the bank and it was all gone. Uncle Jed just stood there a long time before he said anything. Then he told Mr. Walters that even though he was disappointed, he would just have to start all over again. Talk about some hard times. That was the beginning of the Great Depression. Nobody had much money. So the Great Depression was a time when a lot of people did not have any jobs or any work to do, and there was not a lot of money. It was a very hard time. But Uncle Jed kept going around to his customers, cutting their hair, even though they couldn't pay him. His customers shared with him whatever they had, a hot meal, fresh eggs, vegetables from the garden. And when they were able to pay him, they did. And Uncle Jed started saving all over again. So look, he still wanted to cut their hair, even though they couldn't pay him and they gave him food and things like that instead. That's so kind. Old Uncle Jed finally got his barber shop. He opened it on his 79th birthday. It had everything, just like he said it would. Big comfortable chairs, four cutting stations, you name it. The floors were so clean they sparkled. On opening day, people came from all over the county. They were old Uncle Jed's customers. He had walked to see them for so many years, and that day they all came to him. Look at that. Look at that beautiful barber shop. I believe he cut hair all night and all the next day and the next night and the day after that. That man was so glad to have that shop he didn't need any sleep. And of course I was there too. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. When I sat in one of the back of big barber chairs, Uncle Jed patted the back of my neck with lotion like he always did. Then he twirled me round and round in the barber's chair. Uncle Jed died not long after that, and he died a happy man. You see, he made his dream come true, even when nobody else believed in it. And he taught me to dream too. All of that hard work, it took him such a long time, but he still did it. I love that story. I love it about the family. And how even though all these things keep happening to Uncle Jed, he just keeps trying again and again. I loved reading that to you. I hope you liked it. I'll read to you later.